Uh, hi, Bella. Bella, so so you sent me those two spreadsheets, and you're looking to join them or join information on them. But unfortunately, if, I, if we just quickly have a look at them, there is no unique identifier common to both. So there's no there's no key to link them on. Okay. So I mean, we would hope initially, or in this instance, to have a link field with a unique identifier that is repeated in both of these uh, spreadsheets. So we don't have that. So we aren't able to do a join on using the tables and a unique identifier. So what we are going to do is a spatial join. So both layers or both spreadsheets have an X, Y or a Latin long um, field. So, so let's add those to a new project and do a spatial join. Let's just close this down. Okay, so I already have a, a QGIS project set up, but there's nothing in it. So let's add both of those layers as a CSV. So I'll use my data source manager, choose the delimited text option, and then go in and add both of these layers. So X is longitude, Y is latitude, that's all good. So I can say OK or add and close. There's my, my new layer, and I'll just choose that as my icon. And then I also want to add the other one as well. So here it is here, so these are both CSVs. Now this one's X chord and Y chord, so that looks okay. I'll say add and close. And change this color as well. Uh, what should I make it? Slightly smaller so I can see if they overlap or how they overlap. Okay, so we are going to do a spatial join. Now, we've already discussed that some of them don't join or don't overlap 100%. Now in that instance, it might be because there's an issue with the coordinate or it is a different well altogether, um, or there's a an error in at least one of the of the um, the spreadsheets. So let's have a look in this instance here. You see these two, these that one is more than likely that one, but I, I'm not 100% sure on that. What is the dif distance between these two? That's a big distance. That's too big for my liking. Let's see. Uh, like I'm, I'm not going to be able to assume that 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 those two are the same, um, the same well or the same feature. These two nine meters. Okay. So now those I think it's fairly safe to assume that those two are the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use a, a a buffer of twenty meters. So let's just zoom to the full extent again. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to buffer the um, chime analysis, uh, what is this, Jimmy analysis T layer, but I'm going to buffer it by 20 meters. So by buffering it by 20 meters, anything that is uh, um, further away than that, further than 20 meters, will be excluded. So now we can change that, um, that restriction if we want to, but let's just work with 20 meters uh, for this example. Alright, so I want to be, be able to buffer this, so I need to turn it into a, a, a layer that I can buffer and it needs to be in um, a coordinate reference system in meters. So let's just export this. I'm going to export that and we can save it as a geo package. And uh, let's just call it something. Okay, and the layer is going to be The table is Jimmy T, and it needs to be in uh, UTM zone 35 South. We'll say OK. So now that's in meters. We will be able to, to buffer it in meters. Uh, let's just do the same thing. We'll just change this icon to, to red and give it a size of 2. And in this one, we no longer need. So I'll just turn it off. I'm not going to delete it out of the project. But this is the one I'm going to use uh, when we do the buffering. So let's start off by buffering. So we're going to go buffer, and we want to buffer that input layer, yes, with a distance of 20, that is the, the distance I, I said we'd select, and it's going to create a temporary layer, so let's say run, and close. Okay, so now that uh, is very uh, small if at that scale, so if we zoom in, we'll see we put the buffer underneath that there's a buffer of 20. So now what I'm going to do 
is this one is no longer useful to us in this uh, query. We want to assign data from this point file or this point layer onto the buffered layer. And the buffered layer is basically this layer buffered. So the attribute table will be identical. Okay, so that's the attribute table at the moment. And we're going to do a spatial join now, which will give us a whole lot of new columns that belong to that feature. And we only want the, the PID column, so we will delete others. But ultimately, we are going to export this as, a, as an Excel spreadsheet, which you can then work with. Okay, so let's see how we do that. So it's quite simple. I'm just going to zoom to my extent. Uh, I can turn that back on, just for interest's sake. And then we are going to do a spatial join. So it's a join. So I type in join down here. And here are my options. Joins by location, join by nearest. Now we're got not going to be nearest because we, we can't assume that the nearest point uh, is the same point uh, because the nearest point could be 200 meters. So we're just going to be joining by location. So where the overlap intersects with this 20 meter buffer. So join by location. And the base layer we want to join to is the buffered layer. And then we want to get information or attribute information from the Amazi water wells. Uh, the options here, one to many is fine, and temporary layer is fine, so we can say run. Now I didn't create a little suffix there, or a prefix, so if we open up this join layer, we're going to have a whole lot of extra columns. Right, here they are here, so all these columns if I'd give it a, give it them, given them a, a suffix, we would be able to see that they come from the other um, feature layer. So all of these ones come from that layer. So now we can export this. Let's leave it like that. Let's export this as an Excel spreadsheet. So we can right-click on that. We're going to export save feature as the Excel spreadsheet. This one, yep. We can use that one. We will put it in the same place. So we let's just call this um, what is it? A uh, joined table. So it's the joined table. So where there were joins, where there was a spatial join, there will be joins. Otherwise, there won't be. So we can say save. And the coordinate reference system doesn't matter because this is a table. So we can say OK. That will get added to our view. Just open it up to see that those all came through. So here are all the new information. All the new information. So where there are null values, that's because there was no spatial join. So it was further than 20 meters away from any one Amazi water well. Okay, and that's how you do it. So, so we've managed to pull through ones that do intersect, and that should go uh, a little way to helping you identify uh, where the where there are p numbers that are the same. Okay, and that's how you do that. So that is a, a spatial join, or in this instance, what do they call it? They call it a, a join by location, join attributes by location. That algorithm is essentially a spatial join. Okay, so good luck with that. Give me a shout if you have any issues.